Hey everybody, welcome back to my channel. I'm Raven Maureen. Today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you my sewing trends and predictions for 2024. So I have a list here, we're gonna get into it because it's good, y'all. And some of these you probably already know about. So let's start with some things that we have been seeing on the fashion runway and some things that we just know are true. So let's start at the top. The Pantone color of 2024 is Peach Fuzz. And I am so excited about this. I love this color. I love the shade. I love everything that comes with it. And I am so excited for this, especially for wedding season, especially for just spring, summer, and even fall because you can kind of get into like the deeper hues of it and whatnot. But let me tell you how this prediction is already true. So I've been working on a turtleneck dress with some fabric that I bought literally at the end of December of 2023. And guess what color this fabric is? Peach fuzz, baby. It's here. <laughs> it's peach fuzz. So um, get you some peach fuzz, y'all, because she's here. Okay, so let's get into some fashion trends. So what we do know is that Y2K is still here, but she's growing up and I really like this. So yes, we're still gonna see cargo pants. Yes, we're gonna still see the ruching and maybe some of the mini skirts, but those mini skirts are actually becoming longer and they're having more embellishments. So you're gonna see the pockets, the zippers, the slits. You're gonna see some bubbling at the bottom with like the gathers and whatnot. And I really love this grown up version of it. It's not giving me like Hollister Abercrombie or like limited to like how I was really feeling when the Y2K theme was coming back around. And this time I'm like, oh no, I think I like her. Um, so I say all that to say that we're already seeing some patterns that have this type of same embellishment. Hello, Simplicity just dropped their new spring line yesterday and there's already what one cargo skirt in the simplicity line and then one mccall skirt and one mccall's cargo skirt in in the line for spring as well so we know this is here and we know that she's evolving but this is this is a trend i love to see okay my other prediction of cycling is still going to be a thing so not to get too political on here but Experts say the economy is doing better, although inflation is still high. So with that, I do think that upcycling will continue to prosper in this era that we're in. Not only that, but I mean, it's a habit of mine now. So <laughs> I'll be upcycling until um, I get rich. All right. So this is one where it's like, this is for the girly girl and I've already seen at least two influencers actually share tutorials about this and this was like at the end of last year and this is bows. So I know it sounds nuts. I know it's like what but yeah bows and they're not just for your hair. They are on your clothes. They are on your bags. It's everywhere and let me tell you this a friend of mine who sews, she texted me a picture and was like, how do you think they got these bows on this dress? And I was like, yep, bows are back. Okay, and we're still in this girly girl wavelength of purling and embellishments. And I'm not sure if I'm using the word purling the right way, but I saw Mimi G, she got a little pearl applicator. She did something with her sweatshirt one day. Um, and then after that, I saw two or three people get the same applicator. And then I went on Pinterest and I was looking up spring summer trends for 2024. And guess what? Everything is covered in pearls and I don't hate it. I actually love this, but not only do I need to get this applicator now, but I'm like, how long does this actually take? But I think it's cute though. So, um, I really like it. I really think it's going to be super cute on jeans. Um, I'm excited for this. I really am. Okay, we're still going into that girly girl wavelength and we are anticipating a lot of lace and a lot of ruffles. Again, this was another trend that they saw on the runway and it's ruffles throughout. It can be ruffles on the top, ruffles on the bottom, lace throughout. Me personally, I love ruffles, 
Ruffles doesn't always love me back. Um, and it does, and it's not even about placement. It's just, I can't do ruffles on my chest. Like that's a non-starter, but I can possibly do ruffles on the bottom, but it's complicated. Ruffles and I definitely have a complicated relationship. Now lace, I love me some lace. And I think that if you're not necessarily someone who can get down with ruffles, maybe try to get down with the lace, but if you're not into either, there's so many other trends that you can get into this year. It's okay. All right. So this is something that I'm actually really excited to, <clears throat> excuse me, that I'm actually really excited to see. And this is the denim on denim trend and it's back. And I'm excited for this. And this is not like the Western theme that we kind of saw maybe like 10 years ago with like the denim western shirt and like the denim jeans no this is like denim trench denim jeans and we actually did see mimi g she wore a denim she made and wore a denim trench coat on instagram and i feel like she's onto something with this as well because again what did we see on the runway denim trench coats and whatnot so very excited for this trend as well now me personally i don't I don't know if I can commit to a denim trench, but I love this idea of the monochromatic denim. And I'm like, oh, does this mean that like denim dresses are back? Because I really like those. <laughs> okay, so let's get into everything else that is kind of a trend that I've been seeing. So I would call this maybe like social trends because this is a thing. So one social trend that I will definitely say that I have kind of been observing in the last week is events being larger than life and what i mean by that is that in like the last two weeks i have seen so many announcements about different frock tails and whatnot which i love and i'm so excited about and i don't think i'll be able to make it to all of them but i love this for the local communities and the sewers that this is going to service because they're getting them excited and i think I think that this all stems from New York Frocktails and how big of an event it was and how everyone really dressed up and made it a theme. And it was just, it was something that people were talking about for weeks and people still bring up and people still talk about. And I think that that really inspired other organizers to really want to make their city's Frocktails a thing, like a really big deal. And so I love that. And I've been seeing so many save the dates for this, but I think that Frocktails is going to be even bigger this year. I think that Frocktails is gonna be really huge, no matter where you are, it's, it's gonna be huge. So if you live in a major city or close to a major city where you could possibly drive or fly and it's economical for you, then I would start looking at that save the date. I already know that there's an Atlanta one, there's Toronto, obviously New York, um, Chicago Frocktails is coming up. I think that's in June. And I already know I can't go to Chicago Frocktails because I have a wedding that weekend. But um, there's a lot that's already, there's a lot of buzz that's already happening around Frocktails. So stay tuned, turn your notifications on if you want to go to an event this year, because I guarantee you these events are going to be huge this year. All right. So this is going to sound kind of silly because if you are on YouTube as a consumer of entertainment or as a YouTuber like myself, then this sounds kind of silly, but it's actually really true. Long form content is back. And I have two reasons why I think this. One, TikTok is actually extending their video time and it's like around the 10 minute range, I believe. So they're allowing you to post videos that are in longer stretches of time. So that's major, right? Because then that means that they're trying to probably create more value for their, for their average viewer, I guess you could say. But also this means that we're going to see more creators either return to YouTube or start their YouTube pages and I already know that there are several people who have started their YouTube pages within the last few weeks. So there's gonna be more sewing content for 
all of us to consume and that's going to be really exciting for the community. So this is one that I personally think is true and I, okay, so I'm a Pinterest girl through and through. Ever since Pinterest came out, I've had a Pinterest account. It's, that is, that's my baby. That's like social media without the social part. <laughs> it's like when I want to look at pretty things, but I don't want to get on social media, I just go to Pinterest. But in a way, Pinterest is back. And I saw several conversations on threads saying that a lot of the influencers, big name influencers are returning back to Pinterest and really trying to get a foothold on it. And I think that's great as well. But also I say this, because I'm an avid consumer of Pinterest, right? I do remember that in the last like two or three years, there was like a dip in Pinterest content, if you ask me. Like it was a lot of like, I was seeing a lot of the same pins that I already had or like things that I've seen for years. And then like probably this last year, I saw like so much new content. So I don't know if they're incentivizing creative creators, excuse me, to actually post more or if it's easier to post more or what. Um, I'm technically not on Pinterest as a, as a content creator, but I wonder if there's something to that. But I say all that to say that if you haven't logged on to Pinterest in a long time, this is probably the time to do it because I am seeing a hell of a lot more content on there. Here's my last one. And this one is silly to me too because I've been doing this all along. But blogging is back. And I love this because there is something about writing and having pretty pictures and also just having ownership of your own website. Um, a lot of people may not know, but like if you have your content on a social media website, you don't technically own that website, right? So anything could happen at any time. However, if you have a website with a newsletter and a mailing list, then you're able to control that audience and you're able to actually um, give them information firsthand. Also with the, I guess you could say crowded Instagram group that we see. It's, you know, it's very crowded on Instagram. We're seeing a lot more users these days. You're seeing a lot more users on TikTok. A lot of creators are actually going back to their blogs and kind of nurturing those mailing lists and whatnot. That way they can touch and reach their customers firsthand through email in their inbox. And it's more personal and it actually guarantees that someone could see it, right? And so that's why blogging is back. Now, do I think that blogging will take the place of social media? Not necessarily, but I think that it is another tool in a creator's toolbox that needs to be, you know, grown, washed, watered, fed, all those things. It needs to be nurtured in order for it to flourish. So yeah, anyway, you guys, those are my 2024 sewing predictions and trends. If you like this video, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button. And if you have any predictions for 2024, let me know in the comments. I would love to have a conversation with all of you guys. Anyway, thanks for watching. See you guys next time. Bye.